Hey, this is Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your Invisalign initial delivery appointment. A lot of general and pediatric dentists get a little stressed out at that first appointment and they get flustered. So I kind of want to take you through what to do and what not to do. If you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one session with this, this is something that we do all the time with Straight Smile Solutions. Just visit straightsmilesolutions.com. You can schedule a one-time case um, support session. Um, we'll be glad to talk you through with it. But in a nutshell, this is what you're gonna do. Of course, you're gonna pull up your treatment plan and see what's going on. Um, see what's treatment plan. Do you have IPR? You know, Do you have elastics? Do you have precision cuts? Do you have bite tabs? Do you have buttons? You know, or is it a plain vanilla kind of treatment plan with just movement and attachments? So most likely you're going to have attachments, which is really what we're going to be talking about today. In terms of IPR or elastics, we have other videos made on that. So feel free to contact us at info at straightsmilesolutions.com, info at straightsmilesolutions.com, or you can go through the Straight Smile Solutions or orthowhisperer.com website and contact us and we can send you those videos. But they are available on YouTube or at gpwebinar.com. This is really going to be more about the attachments, okay? So what are attachments? Attachments are the little nubbins that are on the teeth, you know, and you're going to be the ones putting them on. You put them on, they act as a handle to help move the tooth either quicker or more efficiently. Um, you take them off at the end. If you do end up needing a revision refinement, you should take them off before you rescan or re-impress. You'll always get a better outcome if you do that. Um, if you can do an, a composite filling, you can do attachments. They're not that hard. So um, basically, they'll get a separate tray for that. It will be the first tray. So sometimes they write attachments on it. And some other aligner companies, it might just say zero tray. It's usually a thinner tray because it's easier to peel off. I like to prep my trays ahead of time. And this is what I'm here to talk to you about. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my trays. This is a little investment. You can buy this at any cannabis dispensary or you can actually buy it at, an at Amazon under cannabis products. We're not using cannabis, but this tight vac is really great because it's totally um, air sealed and also light sealed. So I like to prep my trays ahead of time, throw them in one of these. You can actually stay in these for days, I'll be, but maybe I'll do it in the morning and just leave it in there, put the patient's name on top. So when it's ready for delivery, we're ready to go. I would recommend that you do a lot of practice filling the tray because you really have a short period of time to do this before the stuff starts to harden. So don't practice on your first patient. If you talk to your Invisalign rep, they can probably give you some old discarded um, you know, trays that someone didn't abuse so you can practice on them. Or if you have an orthodontist that you occasionally refer to, usually they have tons of samples. So I would get a bunch of um, practice ones ahead of time and practice so you can get your speed up, okay? So again, the tips are to fill your trays ahead of time, throw them in an airtight, um, uh, airtight, light, uh, tight, vacuum safe thing here. And then when you're ready to deliver, you just, you open it up once you've etched and primed and isolated the patient and just slap them in and light care. It's really, really easy, okay? So the key is, they sell attachment um, material at Invisalign, but it's very expensive. Um, it's just composite. so. Um, you don't want like super filled composite. I wouldn't recommend using flowable either. It gets really messy. I have done it and there's an art to it, but it's not a great way to start. Um, and the key is to just fill it just enough to pack it in with a micro brush. Okay. Uh, with a tiny bit of primer on the end and throw it in there. You need to be able to do this. No joke. in like less than 60 seconds or less than that even. So first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you're looking at your treatment plan and you count how many attachments there are, right? So one, two, three, four on this one, five, six, there's two on that tooth. There's one hiding seven, eight, nine, 10. There's a fair amount on this one. And you, you wanna double check on the actual treatment plan as well to make sure that you've got them all because they can be a little tricky to see, okay? You're gonna go ahead, get your pad, express a little bit. You can see obviously this is not an actual office today. So we're kind of, we're kind of a, mimicking what we're actually going to do but I like to use micro brushes to pack it down take a little bit of this you can do it oh this one is that's pretty some pretty thick stuff always express the first part out first just because it might be kind of hard okay I'm just going to go ahead and fill it fill it nice and fast and then you'll pat it down and get the excess off Okay, keep going, etc. Okay, I'm gonna 
fill it, you're going to dip, you're going to pat, make sure you get the excess out, etc. Go through the whole thing, throw it in there, boom, done, okay? And if you're going to be a little pokey and slow, I would get two of these, one for upper and one for lower per patient. So that way you can just put it in there and let it go. And then when it's time to deliver, it's already preloaded. You're going to go ahead, right? Remember your basic etching skills. You're going to go ahead. You're going to use your blue or green etch, okay? You're going to leave it on for 15, 20 seconds. You're going to rinse thoroughly. And then you only need to etch the area of the actual attachment. So you need to look at the map and be like, I need one here and here and here and here and here and here, you know. Um, so it's good to have the file open when you do it. Put the little drop on, okay? Let it sit on 15, 20 seconds. Water rinse, air dry, the, and then count again. Count all your spots. Your 12 spots or your 11 spots should be chalky dots. So count them, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, great. I got all those because one of the biggest errors that people get, number one, is that they forgot to etch a certain area. You know, well, it's not going to stay on if you didn't etch it, right? We also don't want to etch the whole tooth because that, you know, that's taking off a layer of enamel and making it more weak. So let's just etch the areas that's important, okay? And then you need to read your directions for your primer because some primers you have to just air thin, some primers you have to light cure. So um, and some primers are like an A and B primer. So you want to make sure that you actually read your directions on your primer. You know, so you're going to etch, rinse dry chalky, count, put your primer on, on all your spots, okay? Usually I'm going to dip, I'm going to rub it in, okay? Then you're going to air thin or air dry or light cure or whatever the instructions are. And then you are, should be already isolated. You're ready to open this up, slap that thing on, okay? Make sure the patient's biting hard on cotton rolls and light cure. And don't just light cure a little bit, light cure from all different directions when you put it on, okay? So you wanna be light curing from straight on, under, over, and then when you're all done, you're gonna go ahead and peel this sucker off and everything should stay on, okay? And then you're gonna count your attachments again. Make sure that you have the right amount of attachments on each arch. That's pretty much it. That's how you put on attachments. It's not that hard. If one comes off when you peel it off, it's not a huge deal. Get out your handpiece, smooth it off, make sure you got all the stuff off, and just do that one again, okay? You should be able to just use the template again. If later, when the teeth are moving, save your attachment template, um, because you can always, if teeth have moved, you can always section out a tooth and fix it if it comes off. Let the patients know how many attachments do they have and tell them to count their attachments because theoretically they can knock one off if they eat something hard like a nut or a candy or something like that and we need to get it put back on if they knock an attachment off they need to give you a call stay in that same aligner and come back and do not progress until it gets put back on again and if it comes off and they didn't realize it then you might need to backtrack always have your patients save their old aligners i have a lot of videos on about doing that and about tracking too so Hopefully this is a lot of tips for you for having great either Invisalign, Clear Correct, or aligner outcomes. And I hope you have a great day. Don't hesitate to contact me with any questions. Thank you.